Hey everyone, welcome to the Fargo 3D Printing Show. Jake Clark, John Schneider, Eric Faldi uh, today on the podcast. So uh, we got a couple different topics we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the Task 6 and then we're going to go into some community projects that we've seen across the Facebook groups um, and then just kind of go from there. It's going to be a shorter podcast. Yeah, it, took, it took us one week and the format's <laughs> it's already, already changing. changing. Yep, and it might change after this too. So keep that in mind as we're going through this. Just try send, and give send, us as send much your, feedback. Yeah, send your feedback, positive or negative. We like the positive stuff, but at Faldi, at if, it's, yeah. <laughs> if it's bad. Actually, at Sarah on this one. Yes, yeah, so this is Sarah's idea, but I don't like it. I, I don't dislike it. Um, and I, I figured, uh, yeah, oh, I don't gonna, like she's, it. She's going to come over here and start, just start throwing stuff yeah, at us. I know. Yeah, um, I so figure we'll so, try it. So TAS 6, we've got a couple TAS 6s uh, actually in the office. They're actually off screen. We have a TAS 5 behind us and a mini behind me. Um, so we'll get some shots of that uh, running here later, but I think we have four or five, maybe even six around here. Um, we might have another one over there. Yeah, I think he's opening up a, <laughs> no, that's a TAS 5 box. I don't know. Um, that we're, we're going through and doing some repairs on. So um, the TAS 6 was what, released at CES this past year? No, it was not. No, it wasn't. It's, it was close. It's been, it was it's, a month or two after. It's so. been like the worst kept secret. I mean, so that's the thing with Lulzbot being an open source the, company. I mean, everything is very well documented. Yeah, so devel.lulzbot.com. If you ever want to know what they're working on, just go there, look at the various projects. Um, you can also see different versions because they change the versions yeah. as they as. They, yeah, uh, so I think, for example, on the TAS 5, or maybe it was the Lulzbot Mini, I can't remember which one, but they went through, they name each each variation a fruit, I think. I can't remember. And, and they go and they go in, they go in alphabetical order. Yeah. So one of them it's a flower, another the one it's a fruit. Taz five is the flowers. Okay. Oh, so I went to. It ended up going to. Uh, let's see. I think on the Lulzbot Mini, it got to Holly, or something like that. So A B C D E F G H. So seven variations of it before it finally before it has the final version of it, and then that's the one that they end up shipping. Um, so the Taz six, they've basically been working on that ever since they launched the Taz five. So for Lulzbot, a new product release, it takes that much time just from all right, this is from saying this is the final version of the product we're going to ship out to actually getting it into the marketplace. So in the six to nine to twelve months, that is from when they've quit development on that version of it. Anything developed after that goes into the new version of the Lulzbot Taz or the Lulzbot Mini. Um, depending on which product you're looking at. So the Lulzbot TAS 6, they've had files up there for well over a year now. I looked at it before yeah. CES, and I was like, hey, it, okay. it, it looks done to me. Yeah, so everyone knew what was going to be at CES. They Even at CES, they weren't saying that it had launched. They had multiple printers there, but they weren't saying it had launched yet because they didn't have an official yeah, release Yeah, we, we asked them about it too, and they are just like, mm, it's coming, you know. Yeah. So the Lulzbot, so, um, because they often have changed name of the product late in the development cycle, they use in-house nicknames for all development projects. The Lulzbot Taz line of printer, printers are named after trees, and the, uh, and the Lulzbot Mini line is named after flowers, and the accessories are named after fish. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. The Flexi Dually is named after a fish? Well, the, when they say accessories, what do they? What does well, that entail? That, that's a good example of it. So a flexi dually. I don't know what their development name is oh, for. So it's just okay, the it's just know, the okay. development name. It's not the like official product. Palm, name. nutmeg, uh, juniper berry, cluster. I don't know if cluster is actually one. Um, no cluster. That's where it, olive, holly, ironwood. So like, the, this is just all the the Taz is kind of in one um, one spot. Like the minis. I'll walk back here and see what. Uh, um, it's yeah, like uh, az azalea. Huh? What? 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 Yeah, the, that's I, on the bottom. Take it to R. I hope there's a rhododendron. <laughs> Sounds horrible for. It's like spine. daffodil, uh, <laughs> foxglove. So, I mean, really interesting stuff. And you can actually see on the bottom of their page what the most. It's like mini accessories. The albatross is the flexi, the flexi Struder V2 modified to fit the mini. The brambling is the standard V2 tool head for the Lulzbot mini from daffodil through. Um, I can't say that name. Euphorbia. What I was yeah, going to so say was a medical that term. Sounds, that must, <laughs> that must be a Latin. I wonder if that's a Latin name for a tree or for a fish or whatever. But the big thing is what we're getting at is their product development. It's not exactly a secret. So when they have a big product release, if anyone's been following Lulzbot or anyone really wants to know what they're working on, they're very transparent about what that is. You know what you're getting. Yeah. So for example, on the TAS 6, one of the biggest things people wanted to have integrated in it is a feature from the Lulzbot Mini, which is that automated 
leveling before each uh, before each print starts. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the Lulzbot Mini, the way that it goes through and does the uh, the leveling before each print is it goes down, um, brings the tool head down to the build plate, goes over to a section where there's some uh, some high density felt. It wipes the nozzle off, and then it goes to each of the four corners where there is a metal washer and touches the washer. Once it touches that washer, it completes an electric circuit so it knows where in the z-axis it is. From those four points, four points, it creates a plane. So even if the plane is off by three or four millimeters, it will automatically compensate in the firmware for any unevenness in that print bed. So the z-axis will automatically raise and lower through different points of the print bed by figuring out what that plane is. It does the same thing with the Lulzbot TAS. Now it took a little bit more to get it working on the Lulzbot TAS because there were some issues where it wouldn't always be, the print head wouldn't always be the same distance away from the print bed, or it wasn't where you would expect it to be. Some of that is because the linear rods weren't strong enough or they weren't rigid enough. So the weight of the print head would cause it to bow down mm. ever so slightly which doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you only have those four points to create that grid from, you need to make sure that, or to create that rigid. plane from, you need to make sure it's rigid. So there's no drooping going on. So that was another thing that they changed is they really beefed up the linear, uh, the linear rails, or linear rods. I think they went from 10 millimeters to 12 millimeters. A two millimeter difference doesn't sound like a whole lot, but I mean, mass wise, that's quite a bit more mass. Mm -hmm. So what did, because you had one of the very first Taz. Oh not, man, not I had the I had like one of the first forty Lulzbot Taz three D printers that ever came off the and assembly was that, what, line. Twenty thirteen, twenty twelve. Oh gosh, that would have been. Because we've actually confirmed that it was one of the first. Twenty thirteen, yeah, twenty thirteen. Because I didn't get that until after I started Meld Workshop. I, I never saw that one, did I? Nope. It. Uh, <laughs> I'm, it was, just, I'm just saying. I, it was here. I'm guessing it was sold, but it I, was, I, I just confirming. I don't think I've ever seen that one. I'll so. be very blunt. It was not a great printer. Okay. Um, there were a lot of issues with it. For example, it was using. Uh, it wasn't using Acme lead screws for controlling the z-axis. It was just a very small. I think it was maybe a quarter inch diameter, maybe three eighths inch diameter threaded rod, and that's what it was. That's what it was using for controlling the uh, the z-axis going up and down. Um, the print bed wasn't nearly as robust as it is now. Um, I, because I don't even know if they're using borosilicate glass yet, but I know it was a heat pad underneath glass with PET tape on top. And I had such a, I had a heck of a time getting prints to stick to that. It just, prints would slide around all the time. The extruder wasn't, I mean, it was, not, not, to, not to knock it, it was, it was an okay printer, but it just, it was a hassle to work with. At the, at the first meeting that I ever ever met this met this guy at, we're at a we're at a meetup in a library, and he br like brings his Taz and he sets it up. You're, you're so excited for it, and then it, it wouldn't it wouldn't print in yeah. front of all these people. And and me and Ben Bernard were standing like, oh, you should have got you should have got a rep too. But it was loud. <laughs> I mean, it was well, Lulz but Lulz but printers are still Lulz but well, that's true. But Lulz but printers there's a high whine, and then that, that loud, comes from the motors. Not as loud as a fifth gen. You can probably hear that in the background. Yeah. Like, I usually do a little bit of noise cleanup, is, but that thing is a, it's, it's just, there's no. Well, the, the problem with the fifth gen is it's the, it's the enclosure rattling. It's there's, bad. Although on the newer versions, because we've delivered fifth gens to customers, noticeably quieter. Mm -hmm. I mean, substantially, substantially noticeably quieter. But back to the Taz, their stepper motors, I'm not sure if it's the motors themselves or if it's the stepper motor drivers, but they're so, there, there's a, there's a high loud. pitch noise. You can't really hear it. Well, no, saying. because it's I'm starting to lose that really high frequency <laughs> hearing side of things. I mean, I'm not I'm not quite 27 yet, but I, I can I know Something which I know which pitch I know which pitch you're talking about. It's really really it's a really well. high whine, and it annoys the heck out of me. And I, I have to when nobody's here and there's no yeah, prints, I just walk not, over and turn it off. That's I'm like, not I can't deal with it. Okay, this. so that's not the stepper motors or the drivers. It has something to do with the fan or the power supply. So that's when the printer it's well, just on, one. but it's not it's not printing either anything. one. Either one. Well, yeah, but the fact loud. that it, yeah, but it's clearly not stepper motor if there are no stepper motors sure. moving anywhere. But I mean, e e there's, 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 still, noise. there's still a loud noise either way. Yeah. Unless it's off, then it's quiet. Yeah, I think somebody had asked, is there, you know, they wanted us to do a video about uh, dampening, quieting up the uh, mini and the fifth gen. We, we'd still look at that, and so it's in the future at on, some point, but... On the, well, on the Mini... Lulzbot actually has something, they make it available through no. their website now for the Mini, where it's... Uh, on, the fifth, it, on the MakerBots it, or it's on a, the Yeah, so, the someone Lulzbot. was asking about it, and then we just the had, we haven't done a whole lot. MakerBot. On the Lulzbot... Okay, well, sorry. sorry. I, said, <laughs> I, said, I, said, I know, I know. He's going down the Lulzbot. We're not talking about it. But on the Lulzbot, on the Lulzbot Mini, they have a... It's not a... A gasket's not the right word. It's a... 
sound like vibration. Cushion. Yeah, it's it's like a cork pad that you uh, put yeah, in between the. People have used cork for under the feet. Yeah, but well, not it's it actually goes uh, it goes and interfaces with the stepper motor, so oh. it goes in between the stepper motor and the frame. They only have it available for the Y axis. It's not something that Lulzbot manufactures. It's actually manufactured by the stepper motor company. I believe they use Moon stepper motors because hmm. that's who it's made by. And so you can actually have those, and I think that, I don't know how much it helps with the dampening. Dampener. But I know in schools that's one of the complaints about the Lulz Butt Mini. They love the fact that it auto levels, they love how quickly it prints, they love the material variety you can use with it. It's just the noise. <laughs> I mean, if you have one of those running in the background in a classroom, you're, it's, gonna, it's gonna start to get on your nerves after a while, but if you have a lab of those that are going all the time, I mean, if you're not used to 3D printing, it's gonna bug you. Yeah, did we lose the metal We lost camera? one camera, we can keep going, we still have two. Okay. So I think I think that one goes 12 minutes, and then that one goes whatever. Okay. Again, still experimenting with the format. <laughs> we lost our so, wide shot. <laughs> yeah. Now you just have to look at us individually. Um, that was weird. Anyway, but no, with the Mini, um, for the MakerBot side of things, with the fifth gens, if you have an older one, there's nothing you can really do. I know there's some people that uh, might have might have hacked it between where the motor mounts to the They to tighten the belts and stuff. They say that helps a little bit. But taking out the windows on the sides. Oh, with the Mini, yes. But with yeah. the 5th Gen, there's not oh. a whole lot you can uh, you can do. Well, sure. with the Mini, one of the appeals is that it has those windows on it for for classrooms that you keep curious kids from sticking their, you know, poking their fingers in there because kids are going to do dumb stuff. It's just... They're kids. They're yeah. curious. Yeah. They're, I mean... The teachers just don't want them to find out that just the extruder is hot. Yeah, put it in the middle of the table where no kid can reach it. <laughs> yeah. That's what we said at some demos. It's just like, put it way back on the table so then they really have to get it, they have to really lean for it, and then you'll, you'll no. probably catch them by that. Yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah, but that's one of those projects we have kind of on the back, back burner. Is, a lot of is back some, burner projects. Yeah, a lot of back burner, back burner projects. Some sort of sound dampening kit for the, for the MakerBot Mini, MakerBot 5th Gen. The Z18's not, really not that bad. Z18's no. fine. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the enclosure, so it just Ooh, helps. There's more helps padding. Keep. We have a Z18 here that we're working on, and you can just see so much um, sound dampening material within it. Um, just between where the outer casing is and the inner casing, there's just more material. Is it foam it. or like a? Yeah, it's like a foam-based material. Like a um, like a spray foam or like sheets. It's it's yes to both. Okay. It's, it's the spray foam, but it's in like sheet format. I don't know what the technical term oh, is. Okay. I can, okay. I can look it up. I'll I'll find it. Fair enough. Um, but I guess back on the on the Lulzbot TAS 6, we haven't, we've been doing repair work on some of them. We just haven't had a lot of time to use the, uh, haven't had a lot of time to do printing projects with them yet. Um, just, we've been really busy doing a lot of repair jobs lately. So, I don't know, the TAS 6 will know more about it once we have a chance to use it a bit more. But first impressions from other people that we've seen using it, really great. Um, a lot of the complaints that people had about the TAS 5, uh, Lulzbot's really worked to address those. I think the biggest thing is the drooping of the x-axis. Just the fact that it doesn't droop anymore, or if it does droop, it's, it's a really small amount. I think that makes a big difference. So again, we're working with this new format. Uh, that's kind of what we're talking about with the, the Lulzbot tat. Today, Junior. That's a great movie, by the way. So that's really what we know about the Lulzbot TAS 6 right now. Like I said, we'll know more about it once we start printing with it more. Uh, again, we're working with this new show format. We're going to be doing a lot of different stuff. We're really not going to have a consistent format for probably another half dozen episodes. So let us know what you like or don't like about this episode. Um, and as always, if you aren't already following us on our different social media channels, go ahead and do that. If you already are, that's awesome. Just keep on doing what you're doing. On behalf of all of us at Fargo 3D Printing, myself, Jake Clark, Eric Faldi, I want to thank you for watching. Bye. See you later. Well, I think some of that's angle, too. Yeah. He's sitting farther back. It's a perspective thing. <laughs> I, don't, I got a no-neck-neck. Neck. <laughs> no-neck-neck. Neck. Now this is pod racing! <laughs> Spinning is a good trick. <laughs> no, it's not, Anakin. Oh.